Hello, I'm here at JET talking to Richard Brown today, one of the engineers who works here on Fusion Energy. Hello Richard. Hi Phil, nice to meet you. Uh, so Fusion is about fusing nuclei to produce energy. Uh, what's a nucleus? Well, all matter in the universe is made of what we call atoms. Um, you, me, and everything around us is built of atoms. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing about atoms is that almost all the mass is uh, concentrated in the centre. Mm -hmm. It's almost entirely empty space. Hold on, I'm mad of mad atoms. But well, you're almost entirely empty space as well, then. And this, this concentration of mass in the centre is what we call the nucleus. And the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. Protons yep. have a positive charge and yep. have a massive one. Yep. Neutrons don't have any charge, but they also have a massive one. So we have this nucleus in the centre, which is mm -hmm. positively charged. Mm -hmm. Then around this, we have orbiting electrons. Mm -hmm. Electrons don't have any mass at all, mm -hmm. or virtually no mass at all, but they are negatively charged. Mm -hmm. Fusion is about fusing those nuclei. How does that work? Well, when we're trying to fuse things, what we're actually trying to do is bring together very light um, nuclei to create a heavier, uh, more stable nuclei. And then in the process, we actually release large amounts of energy. So by way of example, if we take these two ball bearings and mm -hmm. imagine that these represent uh, two, pr uh, two positively charged uh, nuclei. Yeah. So, if we imagine we're trying to bring these uh, closer and closer together, the electrostatic propulsion force is going to get stronger and stronger. They're mm -hmm. going to push away mm -hmm. harder and harder. So how do we overcome this force? Well, the trick is we have to heat these up to very, very high temperatures. At high temperatures, they've got lots of kinetic energy, so they're whizzing around very, very quickly all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. And then um, every so often, so they're bouncing off, it, off, off each other all the time, mm -hmm. every so often, about 1 in 10,000 times, they'll have a successful collision. So when they're close enough together, strong nuclear force pulls mm -hmm. them together, and there we have a successful fusion reaction. You made it look easy. Uh, it's a lot harder than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> How hot does it need to be to achieve fusion in the real world? Incredibly hot. About 150 million degrees Kelvin, which is 10 times hotter than the centre of the sun. And we regularly achieve those sort of temperatures in jet. OK, explain this bit of apparatus. Well, we're going to do a small experiment to uh, demonstrate the forces that are involved in a fusion reaction. So here we have um, a gradient on this piece of tube, mm -hmm. and that represents yep. the electrostatic propulsion that those nuclei have got to go overcome. Right, so they've got to make it up the hill. Exactly. But hopefully we can overcome that electrostatic propulsion, and we'll get the two nuclei to stick together uh, by the strong nuclear force and get a fusion reaction. Right. So if you'd like to take this ball bearing, yep. which represents the, the nucleus, yep. and I'll take this one here, okay. pop them into the fusion reactor. Oh, look. They repel, they fly there apart. There we go. So now we're going to give these, we're going to give these nuclei some kinetic energy. And we're going to do this in this case by just putting this spring back and firing the balls. OK, give me a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Right, so they didn't make it up the hill. Well, obviously they didn't have enough kinetic, kinetic energy. They weren't hot enough. They weren't hot enough. So therefore they couldn't under, and overcome that electrostatic repulsion. OK. So should we try and increase, we'll Let's increase try the temperature again. and see if we can get them yep. to fuse this time? Three, two, one, go. Oh, so close. Perfect. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yes. Oh, successful fusion reaction. All right, well done. Is this what your work's like every day? No, I actually design the real machines which make this happen. Right. So if you come to my office, I'll show you some of the designs that I'm doing right now. Love to. Okay, let's Great, go. Let's go. Richard's an engineer at CCFE where he designs the magnetic systems that can find the particles whizzing about in the hot plasma. Okay, so what are you working on here, Richard? Well, Phil, I'm working on one of the designs here for the electromagnets which go inside the tokamak. And what purpose does an electromagnet serve? Well, because the plasma is at a very high temperature, we need to make sure it doesn't touch the wall. And we do this by generating very high magnetic fields, which can find the plasma and keep it away from the walls of the vacuum vessel. So we're looking at lots of conductors in parallel here? Yes. In this particular core, there's about 25 conductors in the pack. Uh -huh. um, and we're looking at a small section here. In reality, it goes 360 degrees around the inside of the right. vessel. Right. Okay. How big are these wires? Well, it's about one inch in cross-section. Right. Okay. That's a, that's a big, chunky wire. So what do the colours mean? Well, basically, I'm, I'm checking here for regions of high stress. Now, these red regions yep. are areas where the stress is the highest. Mm -hmm. Because the, the coil is rejected to high temperatures and high forces, this yep. can generate some very high stresses in the material. If right. these stresses are too high, then it might mean the component fails. So we need to make sure that they're not um, above uh, tolerable limits. 
Sounds like pretty important stuff. I'd better let you get on with it. Thanks for your time today. Cheers, Bill. Thank See you. you.